the jewels belonging to the most illustrious order of St. Patrick, commonly called the Irish Crown Jewels or State Jewels of Ireland. They contain 394 precious stones taken from the English Crown Jewels of Queen Charlotte and the Order of the Bath Star of her husband, George III. The jewels were assembled by Rundell and Bridge. They were described at the time as a diamond star of the Grand Master of the Order of St. Patrick, composed of brilliants, Brazilian stones, of the purest water, four five-eighths by four and a quarter inches, containing of eight points, four greater and four lesser, issuing from a centre enclosing a cross of rubies, a trefoil of emeralds surrounding a sky blue enamel circle with words in rose diamonds engraved on black, value of about £14,000. Now today that's the equivalent of over £2 million. Described at the time as Diamond Badge of the Grand Master of the Order of St. Patrick set in silver containing a trefoil in emeralds on a ruby cross surrounded by a sky blue enameled circle in rose diamonds surrounded by a wreath of trefoils in emeralds the whole enclosed by a circle of large single Brazilian stones of the finest water surmounted by a crowned harp in diamonds and loop also in Brazilian stones total size of oval 3 by 2 3 8 inches height 5 5 8 inches value 16,000 pounds and today that is the equivalent of around about 2 million The jewels were kept at Dublin Castle and only brought out on ceremonial and state occasions. The jewels were transferred to a new safe which was to be placed in the newly constructed strong room. The new safe was too large for the doorway and Sir Arthur Vickers, the Ulster King of Arms, instead stored it in his office. Seven latch keys to the door of the Office of Arms were held by Vickers and his staff and two keys to the safe containing the insignia were both in the custody of Vickers. He was known to regularly get drunk on overnight duty and he once woke up to find the jewels around his neck. The insignia were last worn by the Lord Lieutenant, the 7th Earl of Aberdeen, on the 15th of March 1907, at a function to mark St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March. They were last known to be in the safe on the 11th of June, when Vickers showed them to a visitor. The jewels were discovered to be missing on the 6th of July 1907, four days before the start of her visit by King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra to the Irish International Exhibition. The theft is reported to have angered the king, but the visit went ahead. A police investigation was conducted by the Dublin Metropolitan Police. Detective Chief Inspector John Kane of Scotland Yard arrived on the 12th of July to assist. His report never released is said to have named the culprit and to have been suppressed by the Royal Irish Constabulary. What came to light in the aftermath of the theft 
was the revelation that there was a secret homosexual ring centred in the castle. The ring included the people responsible for the safety of St. Patrick's jewels, as well as the future Duke of Argyll, who was married to the King's sister, Princess Louise, and Lord Haddo, the son of the Viceroy and Lord Lieutenant. The homosexuality of several of the suspects once revealed only served to perpetuate the rumours of gay orgies in the castle itself. The jewels were locked in a safe in the castle library. Both keys were kept by Sir Arthur Vickers, one he wore on a chain on his person at all times and the other was locked in a drawer in his bedroom. Access to the library was only through the main entrance to the Office of Arms. There were seven keys to the entrance door. They were held by Sir Arthur, his secretary, Pierce Gunn Mahoney, the office manager, the night inspector, the board of works overseer, and the office cleaner. We can eliminate the overseer as a suspect because he hadn't been at the castle since March. Police also eliminated the cleaner and secretary. As for access to the library during working hours, any official visitor a member of staff could slip unnoticed into the cellars whenever the office manager, the only person whose office was on the ground floor next to the library, went upstairs to Sir Arthur's office. He or she could also easily leave unnoticed the same way. As for the night time, a skylight that led into the office areas could be easily opened unnoticed from the ground level. None of the military or police guards who were there 24 hours a day noticed anything suspicious. Here are the main suspects. Sir Arthur Vickers, Ulster King of Arms Island's Chief Herald and genealogist and the man responsible for the safekeeping of St. Patrick's jewels. He was diligent in his duties, but when he was told on the 3rd of July that the entrance door had been found unlocked, he didn't seem at all concerned. On the 6th of July, he gave his safe key to the office manager, who then discovered the safe open and the jewels gone. Sir Arthur had an intimate, possibly physical relationship with Francis Shackleton whom he invited to live with him, albeit in separate bedrooms, in his house some half an hour carriage ride from the castle. He was also known to show off the jewels to anyone he thought might be interested. He seemed genuinely shaken when the jewels were found missing. Alibi. On the 2nd of July, he was having dinner with a friend and wouldn't have had time to go from his house to the castle and back without being seen by the guard. On the 15th of July, he checked the premises, locked the office and went home. He didn't return until 11.30 the next morning. Francis Shackleton, Dublin Herald, a mainly honorary and ceremonial title. This was Sir Arthur's core second in command, younger brother of the explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton. Francis and Arthur had known each other for years and Shackleton lived with Sir Arthur when performing his ceremonial duties in Dublin. Being appointed Dublin Herald helped to regain his reputation, which had been tarnished after he resigned from the army. After some hushed up scandal, he could easily have secretly copied one of Sir Arthur's safe keys when staying with him in Dublin. Alibi. Francis hadn't been in Ireland since May. Pierce Gunn Mahoney, Cork Herald, again mainly an honorary title. 
He was Sir Arthur's nephew and visited him at home many times. He could also have easily secretly copied one of the keys. Alibi He had left Dublin in April for health reasons and didn't return until the 4th of July. Francis Bennett Goldney He was the lowest rank of the Herald and yet again he had an honorary ceremonial title. As such, he could afford to leave a full career in England. As the Mayor of Canterbury, he first met Sir Arthur through a mutual friend, the gear sculptor Lord Ronald Gower. It was revealed after Bennett Goldney's death that he had been pilfering various items from the Canterbury archives. Alibi Like Shackleton, Bennett Goldney had not been in Ireland since May when he stayed with Sir Arthur and Shackleton at their home and worked with them in the castle. Could this have given him the chance to secretly copy one of the keys? Richard George's musket instructor at the military barracks near Dublin. He was Francis Shackleton's lover. He was physically kicked out of his regiment for being found having sex with a 16-year-old boy. One of many it later transpired. Alibi. Supposedly he was in his barracks on both of the evenings the police were looking into. We'll never know. He was never questioned. Interestingly, when he was arrested for manslaughter a few years later, he confessed to the theft of St. Patrick's jewels, but no one believed him. Those are the suspects. A commission of investigation was conducted. Sir Arthur Vickers refused to take part arguing that only a public inquiry would reveal the truth. He was probably right. 22 witnesses were called to give evidence and the commission turned into a trial against him. Sir Arthur was found guilty of negligence and fired as Ulster King of Arms. To his dying day, he accused Francis Shackleton of the theft. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.